Good morning. I'm glad to be here with you. Um, quite a ways away. Uh, I love England. I've been there several times, and uh, it's absolutely a fantastic place. Um, I want to talk a little bit about um, the Dynasphere, uh, which is Keeley's technology. It may well be the technology of the future. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit. I'm also going to talk to you about some of the science and some of the stuff we're doing with that. And the biggest surprise is we discovered last year that science, unbeknownst to itself, has been working with what we call God. <clears throat> and they didn't even know it. <clears throat> when they talk about the scalar forces, the scalar potentials, um, those are undefined, unknowable forces, and science deals with them all the time now, more and more, actually, more and more. <clears throat> but it was only last year that we, we realized that when they say scalar forces, it's the same thing as talking about God. And I'll go, I have a little presentation which I'll walk through with you and give you a little bit of information uh, of, of how that is so and why I say that. <clears throat> now, the dinosphere, the dinospheres, I think David has a little presentation there someplace on your premises. Uh, the dinospheres were originally invented by John Keeley in the 1880s. And they operated on these scalar forces, which I'll describe later. <clears throat> In fact, most of his science before he died in 1898 were strictly based on the scalar forces, which we also know to be mind forces. Um, we endeavored to rediscover his science in, in, since the early 80s. We created the first dinosphere in 1995 and 96, uh, thinking we were making a free energy machine. We didn't know about scalar, we didn't know about love, we didn't know about all these other forces at that time. Um, so we made the dinosphere and we took it to an con energy conference in Denver in the summer of 1996. And I come back from lunch one day and there's all these women standing around the dinosaur with their hands out like this to it. Like they're warming their hands on a fire. And I thought that was pretty strange. <clears throat> and I asked him what they were doing. And one of them said, we're standing here feeling the love come off this machine. And my entire life flashed in front of my eyes when she said that because I wasn't feeling any energy. All the other ladies there, eight or ten of them, all nodded in agreement with what she just said. So I had to admit there's something going on here that I had no clue about. And she chose to call it love. Okay, so I started studying love. Every book, every person I could find, every workshop I could attend, trying to find out what this love thing is. And we discovered a lot. There's a whole huge uh, body of literature, and it spans all the religions. It spans science when you know what to look for. When Keeley says sympathetic vibration, that's just a fancy word for love, because when two things are in tune with each other, they're in harmony, what happens to one is experienced by the other. That's a pretty good definition of love. And in that process of new discovery, uh, we took the dinosaur to a center in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and we had a lot of people come in Thursday nights mostly, and we had uh, workshops, and I told them, says, you guys are going to be the guinea pigs. <clears throat> I told them what happened at the conference, um, and I said, you guys be around this dinosaur and tell me what you experienced. <clears throat> so over the next year and a half, we saw some extraordinary things. We saw people being healed mentally, physically, spiritually, physically, and we didn't have an explanation for that. Uh, we built a machine that's made out of metal. We had imbued it with our cheese, so we knew there was a strong spiritual component to this. 
but we didn't know what the mechanism was between the mechanical machine and its spiritual components and this healing that we were seeing happening spontaneously. <clears throat> and over time, we did piece together a paradigm. And most of you already know the secret. The secret is love yourself. When you love yourself, you're in a healthy state. When you don't love yourself, you get disease and all kinds of problems, even in your life experiences. So what's the nature of love? What does that have to do with a mechanical machine? <clears throat> and how does that happen? Well, it has to do with uh, the state of vibration. If we have a number of vibrations and they form a concord, that's harmony. And when you're in a state of harmony, you're in a state of love. And we saw many people approach the dinosphere, and you could see in their faces and their demeanor that they were beginning to feel this thing called love. And those that went with the feeling, who recognized it and went with it, uh, had an incredible experience, all kinds of different experiences, all positive. And yet we saw some people who were moving into that direction, they started feeling this thing called love, and they pulled back. And they became afraid, <clears throat> and they didn't want to go near it. And that's usually addressed in the concept that these people were hurt by what they thought was love at some time in their past. So when they feel that love and they're reminded of it in their person, in their psyche, they can, they can go to it or they can rebel against it. <clears throat> and it's all very curious. I learned more about people and their psychology and, than I, you know, it was amazing. It's just an amazing learning experience. So to further that, <clears throat> well, before we get into that, <clears throat> There are, there have been <clears throat> hundreds and hundreds of people around, well, maybe thousands of people around these dinosaurs over the years. And there has been an interest in having one in Europe. We have five of them uh, distributed across the United States, and, uh, but none outside the United States. And we want to, we want to change that. We want to bring this, this energy, this knowledge, this awareness, to as many people as we possibly can. Because if this energy promotes peace, harmony, and love in people and individuals, then we need to get as many of these out there as we possibly can. And I have a project, and uh, we haven't really talked much about it because we really haven't done much with it. Uh, it has to do with the hundredth monkey. If we can get a hundred of these dinosaurs spread around the world, is that 100th monkey effect going to kick in for us? And all of a sudden, everybody's going to feel this love and peace? Well, I think that's a pretty good project. <clears throat> it's a big project. It's going to cost a lot of money. It's going to be an immense amount of work. But I think it's worthwhile. And you can talk to David there at your conference, and he can fill you in on the Dinospheres to Europe project. There's also interest in having one in Russia and South Africa and Japan, but not much has happened on those fronts yet. <clears throat> well, let's talk a little bit about this thing that I said, science recognizes God. But science doesn't recognize God as the ordinary person in the street does. Uh, of course, there's numerous religions and everyone's got a different concept of what God is. <clears throat> so that just tells us right off the bat, nobody knows what God is. If they did, they'd all agree. Uh, science comes at it uh, trying to understand how the universe works. We live our lives trying to understand how our lives work. So we're all converging on this thing called God. You can pick and choose whatever religion you want and, uh, you know, get whatever understanding you want. In science, they came at it from a different perspective uh, as they didn't want to hear about God. They don't want to hear about anything that they can't demonstrate in a laboratory. And uh, so, together with that, they have this attitude that if they can't demonstrate it in their laboratory, it doesn't exist. 